Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we will take a deep dive into the Corn Warband Upgrade Tree for the Warrior of Chaos rework in the upcoming Champions of Chaos DLC. As you can see, there are 15 units on the Corn Warband Upgrade Tree, and starting again with the Marauders tier, we have the Marauders of Corn. As a unit that has the Mark of Corn, it will by default lose 5 points of melee defense, gain 15% spell resistance, and acquire the Frenzy ability. So as long as the unit can maintain over half of its base leadership, it will have 10% more weapon strength, 10% more charge bonus, and 10 points of additional melee attack and immunity to psychology. And this bonus is going to be standard across all the units on this upgrade tree. And these bonus that are default to every single unit on this upgrade tree is a significant boost that plays into the corn offensive playstyle. And in addition to these Mark of Corn changes for the Marauders of Corn, they will also have 20 points of extra armor advantage over the standard Marauders. Then in addition, we have the dual weapon variety of the Marauders of Corn, which forgoes the shield and opts for another axe. And thus, they will lose the 35% range block chance and 6 points of melee defense for improved damage that comes in the form of 30 base damage, 10 armor piercing, and 5 points of bonus against infantry, and 12 additional charge bonus. Overall, given the design philosophy behind Corn Faction, where your main goal is to be aggressive and dish out heavy damage, I believe the dual weapon variety is the superior choice here. Certainly, losing 6 points of melee defense and range block chance will make the unit much more vulnerable, but the offensive trade-off, especially on the initial charge, where you can hit up to 77 melee attack from the frenzy and charge bonuses, which should allow the dual weapon variety to deal enough damage to make up for the potential return damage taken from their lack of melee defense. And since 23 total melee defense from the standard marauders is nothing to mail home about, I would much rather rely on my offense to rapidly decrease the enemy numbers, which will in turn reduce the damage taken by my units. But keep in mind when charging into units with expert defense, who are braced, as most of your bursts rely on that high initial charge bonus. Then moving on to the Chaos Warriors of Korn, we have three varieties now in the standard Axe and Shield, the Dual Weapons, and the Return of the Halbert. Since we already talked about the specialization between the standard and dual weapon varieties, let's use them to take a look at the upgrade improvement, which is pretty standard as the health per entity goes up from 78 to 90, while the entity count goes down from 120 to 100, armor goes up to 110, and shield range block chance goes up to 60% from the front. Leadership increases by 15 points, while the mass increase from 100 to 160 will slow the unit down by 7 points of speed, Melee attack increase only by 2 points, while melee defense vastly improved by 16 points. Weapon damage increases 6 points per axe, which means the dual weapon variety actually gets 12 point boost. And finally, there's a 2 point improvement on charge bonus. Then if we compare these two varieties to the brand new Halberd variety, we can see that melee attack dips by 6 points, while melee defense come right about average between the two varieties previously, as the weapon damage profile will shift to a more armor piercing focus output at 10 base and 24 armor piercing, with an additional 19 point bonus against large, which means when fighting against large, the helper variety will actually have vastly more melee attack and weapon damage. And the massive drop in charge bonus makes sense since you want these units stationary and braced to activate their charge defense versus large and charge reflection abilities. Overall, I would go for the helper variety if you're surrounded by enemies who spam large units such as ogres for example. Otherwise, the dual weapon variety with their increased damage and bonus against infantry is still the way to go. Finally, moving on to the Chosen of Corn, the Halber variety once again disappears as we return to just the standard variety of Axe and Shield and dual weapons. And if we compare the two and look at the improvement from the Chaos Warrior tier, we can see the same health increase, entity drop, as well as stat improvement shown across the board here. And the most intriguing change is the additional of Flaming Attack for both units, as you will now be able to cut the enemy healing in half, which can be valuable against a multitude of healing focused factions. Additionally, the dual weapon variety continue to outpace the standard unit in terms of weapon strength improvements, and even doubles their bonus against infantry modifier from 5 points to 10 points in the chosen form, which cements them as the better choice between the two units, unless you're facing off against a range heavy enemy focused on armor piercing range damage, as then the 60% range block chance from the standard variety's shield would gain a lot more value. Of course, you can forego the Chaos Warrior and Chosen route by upgrading your Marauders to Forsaken of Corn, 
But since the standard undivided forsaken unit also has frenzy by default, the mark of corn this time will only provide a 5 point penalty to melee defense and 15% spell resistance. Thankfully, the corn variety will gain flaming attack, but overall I think the upgrade here is probably more detrimental with the 5 point loss of melee defense as the only significant stat change between the two units. But this is not the case for the spawn of corn, as the standard chaos spawn does not have frenzy, so the mark of corn will give its full benefit here. In addition, the spawn of corn will gain 10 additional points of armor, which doubles their previous amount, and flaming attack attribute to help cut down enemy healing, which makes it the better option between the two choices here. Then moving on to cavalry options, we start with the Marauder Horseman of Corn with throwing axes, and when compared to the standard undivided counterpart, there is a whole laundry list of changes in addition to the three changes from Mark of Corn. First, the shield disappears, and as does the 35% range block chance, but in its place, there is now 20 points of additional armor, 16 more weapon strength, 5 points bonus against infantry, flaming attack on the range attack, and 12 more charge bonus, and these changes legitimately make the Marauder Horseman, which was just a weak cavalry unit best used for harassment and chase down of a ready routed unit, as a potential shock cavalry that can dish out significant melee damage against infantry. Then upgrading from the Marauder Horseman of Corn, there are no tier 2 cavalry options, but there is the tier 2 Chariot of Corn, which get the standard mark of corn changes and 10 additional points of armor. Of course, Frenzy with 10% boost to charge bonus becomes much more relevant on high base charge bonus units such as the Chariot here. And what is more surprising is that the Corn Warband upgrade tree actually have the Mark Gore Beast Chariot. And when compared to the Undivided variety, we can see a 5 point increase in melee attack and 7 point decrease in melee defense, which are both not super relevant to the charge focused Gore Beast Chariot. Instead, the new Frenzy ability, which will give additional charge bonus and weapon strength, will make the Gore Beast Chariot of Corn the better option between the two. And not only does Corn Warband Upgrade Tree have access to high tier Chariot, it also has high tier Cavalry. First, there are the two Chaos Knights in the Standard and Lance variety. On paper, their improvements rather marginal, as aside from the Mark of Corn bonuses, they will get 10 more armor and flaming attack over their undivided counterpart. But much more important for them is that they have one more upgrade option over even the undivided Warband Upgrade Tree in the Skull Crushers of Corn. And looking at the stat improvement from the Chaos Knights, we can see that the Skull Crushers almost double in per entity health from 135 to 253. The number of entity did come down from 60 to 32 to counterbalance this a bit, but the mass also increases from 1130 to 1650, which is very important for charge heavy units such as these heavy cavalry units here. The other stat changes are much more marginal with leadership going up by 1, speed dropping by 8 to compensate for the mass increase, melee attack dips slightly, melee defense is in the middle of the pack when compared to the two varieties of the Chaos Knights, damage goes up, and a new 10 point bonus against large really help define what skull crushers are used for as they have the mass to crush little infantry units, but also the damage profile to now counter enemy large unit such as their cavalry or monstrous infantry, which are usually what does well to stop your Chaos Knights by matching their mass to stop them from cycle charging. Lastly, while the Skull Crusher do not have more charge bonus than the Lance Chaos Knights, it still has a higher charge bonus than the standard Chaos Knight, which will probably cement their place as the best cavalry option for the corn associated Warrior of Chaos factions. And with that, our Mark of Corn Warband upgrade guide is complete. Hopefully you'll find this helpful for your upcoming Warrior of Chaos campaign, and as always, leave a like to help out the channel, and I'll see you all the same time tomorrow, as we'll be wrapping up these Warband Upgrade Deep Dive videos with the Zinch Warband Upgrade Tree for Village Faction and the upcoming Champion of Chaos DLC. So until then, bye!